Hello, in this video we're going to look at some sequence and series convergence testing. So here I have uh, several series, infinite series, to see if they're going to converge or not. We have several series that we have tests that we have looked at before. We looked at the divergence test, direct comparison test, limit comparison test, integral test, ratio test, root test, and alternating series test. And we're going to take this and look at these in the next three videos. In this video I'm going to go over the problems in the le left column. Next one, the, the middle, and the, the one after that, the third column. I did switch the E and the pi here from the last video uh, when I introduced these problems. Uh, but uh, other than that, they're the same. So let's dive into this one in the first column here. Now, hopefully you've worked all of these yourself. In fact, if you haven't worked these yet, I'm going to encourage you to just pause the video and write these problems down, all of them. Uh, but especially these first uh, six here because I'm going to go over those in this video. If you'll write those down and try them yourself before you go on, uh, I think you'll learn a lot more from this. So here we go. Natural log of 2 to the k power. Natural log of 2 is a constant. And since uh, 2 is between 1 and e and the natural logarithm is an increasing function, the natural log of 2 is between the natural log of 1 and the natural log of e. Natural log of 1 is 0 because e to the 0 is 1. And the natural log of e is 1 because e to the first is e. So the natural log of 2 is a constant number between 0 and 1. So we have a constant number to a uh, base, uh, that's the base, to a power just k. We're summing that for k equals 1 to infinity. That is a geometric series. Since the base is less than 1, that is a convergent series. And it converges to the first term, which is what you get when you plug in k is 1, which is natural log of 2, times 1 over 1 minus the base, which is natural log of 2. So this converges to the natural log of 2 over 1 minus the natural log of 2, which I just worked out with the calculator, to be about 2.25889153. The next one is uh, the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of k to the pi power times k to the e power. Well, according to the properties of exponents, that's just k to the e minus pi power. And that's going to diverge to infinity. This is a p-series. p-series here has a variable base. Sorry, I missed that. Uh, variable base here of k and a constant power, which is e to the pi power, e minus pi power. Well, e is about uh, 2.72, and pi is about 3.14, so that's a difference of about negative 4.42, which is greater than negative 1. So this is a p-series that diverges to infinity. The next one is the... Uh, arc tangent of k over 1 plus k squared. Sum that from k equals 1 to infinity. Now, we have a couple of options here. I'm going to work it two different ways. First, I'm going to realize that arc tangent is always something in the interval from minus pi over 2 to pi over 2, open interval. But actually, for natural numbers of k, uh, arc tangent is increasing function, so it's going to start at the lower end at pi over 4 because the arc tangent of 1 is uh, is pi over 4, and then it's going to go from there up to pi over 2. So it's, it's, it's definitely a positive term series, okay? And this one should behave like a convergent p-series because if you sort of ignore the top you, and you ignore this 1 here, you get 1 over k squared. So we should compare it to that. Uh, in fact, uh, in this case, a direct comparison can be used because the inequalities go the right way. Uh, 0 is less than pi over 4, which is less than or equal to arctangent of k, which is less than or equal to pi over 2, actually less than pi over 2. And then divide everything by 1 plus k squared, and uh, so we get, get arctangent of uh, k over 1 plus k squared, still bigger than 0 for sure, but it's less than, um, well, the biggest it could get would be pi over 2. Less than, less than or equal to pi over 2. And um, the, um, we're going to divide that by 1 plus k squared. And if you look at that, 
uh, this denominator is bigger than just 2 times k squared. So you can sort of, the 1 plus k squared makes the denominator bigger, which makes the whole fraction smaller. So this is less than pi over 2 k squared. In other words, pi over 2 times 1 over 1 over k squared, or pi over 2 times k to the negative 2. So that sum is positive, and it's less than, uh, or uh, let's say less than or equal to at least, pi over 2 times k to the negative 2. It's probably less than, or less than but let's go ahead and say uh, less than or equal to just to uh, sometimes when you're dealing with limits like that, you have to be careful. So uh, in any event, the sum there is going to converge if this converges, and it does. That's a convergent p-series uh, times a constant. So that converges. We could also use the integral test. Um, if we replace k by x, we obtain a function that's continuous and decreasing on this interval. Um, and we can verify this by finding the derivative, which since the derivative exists, that will be continuous, but then also it will be, uh, we'll show the derivative is negative, which makes the uh, function decreasing. So in other words, we're going to take the k and replace by x's here. And the reason why we kind of knew this might work is the, uh, the derivative of arctangent of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we have... Uh, we have something we can easily integrate. But first, we're going to find the derivative to show that this is decreasing. So we use the quotient rule. So it's the bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom or the bottom square. So the derivative of arctangent of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. And the derivative of the 1 plus x squared is just 2x. So this is going to cancel out and just give you 1. So we got 1 minus 2x arctangent of x over 1 plus x squared squared. Now, the biggest, let's see, arctangent of x is at least as big as, as uh, let's see, so this is subtracting, so actually I should have said, hang on a second, yeah, this is correct, so this is less than subtracting the least amount. Well, the least you can subtract here is when you put pi over 4 here. It's definitely less than that. Okay. Because we'd be subtracting even, even more than that if we put in something bigger between pi over 4 and pi over 2 here. So this reduces to 2 pi x. And I'm going to multiply, actually I multiply top and bottom by 4. So that 4 cancels, puts a 4 there, put a 4 here. And then look at this. Let's see. The the x squared plus 1, actually it's already positive squared. That's positive. The 4 is positive. And that about 4 minus 2 pi x. Well, that's going to be, uh, what is that negative? Well, uh, that's certainly a decreasing function. And the smallest is, this is, uh, the largest this is going to get is when x is 1. When you're subtracting 2 pi from 4, well, pi is around, it's bigger than 3. So, you know, this is going to be less than negative 2 for sure on the top. And so, but anyway, the point is it's always going to be uh, negative. So since it's always negative, at least from, you know, from 1 on out, then this is a decreasing function from there on. Okay. Well, we have a decreasing function. It's continuous. Um... We integrate it now from 1 to infinity. And the integral and the, and the sum will do the same. Either they'll both converge or both diverge. So here we let u be arctangent of x. du is then 1 over x squared plus 1 dx. So uh, put the 1 over x squared plus 1 with the dx to be du. The arctangent of x is u. Of course, it's an improper integral, so we're just taking the integral from 1 to b where we can apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and then take the limit as b goes to infinity. That's how we do uh, improper integrals like that. So these are x values from 1 to b. So I, rather than trying to switch over to what u would be, I left it x's. But I have to, if you do that, you have to say x equals 1 and x equals b there. So the antiderivative is 1 half u squared. Evaluate from x equals 1 to b, but switch in u as arctangent of x. So it's x arctangent of x squared. 
uh, from x equals 1 to b. So it's arctangent of b quantity square minus arctangent of 1 quantity square. Arctangent of 1 is pi over 4. And so we square that, we get pi square over 16. But this arctangent of b square, whatever that is, we're going to take the limit, which we can bring the limit all the way inside of here. And arctangent of b uh, is going to be approaching pi over 2 as, as uh, b approaches infinity. Has an asymptote there. And that squared is pi squared over 4. Get a common denominator of 16. We got 4 pi squared minus 1 pi squared is 3 pi squared over 16. Uh, and then times the half makes this over 32. So it's 3 pi squared over 32 is the limit, which is about 0.9253. And since this integral converges, so does the sum. So we can approximate that by adding up the first 50 terms, which I did here with the TI Inspire CAS calculator. You could do it with the TI-84 as well. Or you could do it without a whole lot of uh, trouble in uh, like a spreadsheet like Excel. And so here I, I summed this up using a calculator and got an approximate value here. Now, since this is an, uh, a positive term series, this is going to be an underestimate of the sum. You're going to be adding more to that as we add more terms. So uh, the, the, the exact sum is at least that big. And the remainder, 50, is the integral from 51 to 100, or 51 to uh, infinity of arctangent of x over 1 plus x squared. So same... Uh, same antiderivative, arctangent of x squared, that we got uh, up here. And this time we're evaluating it from 51 to b. Uh, take the limit. We still got the one. Uh, yeah, the one half is from, from the, the u squared times one half. So that's going to still be out there as well. Okay, so what do we got here? We got arctangent of b squared minus arctangent of 51 squared. Take the limit as it goes to infinity. This is pi squared over 2, pi over 2 quantity squared minus arctangent of 51 quantity squared. And take half of that, and I just did that with the calculator to get a decimal. So it's about, uh, well, it's at least less than 0 0.031. So our error is no more than 0 0.031. Add that to what we have here. And uh, we have add this error here, bound on the error to what we have here for the, our estimate. And I rounded both off to four decimal places. And so somewhere the, the actual sum is between those two numbers. How many of these I say? I was going to do through F. Okay, so let's do this. K factorial over 2K factorial, we're going to look at that sum. When you see the factorials, that's a pretty much a dead giveaway that we want to try to use the ratio test. So we do the absolute value of the K plus 1 term over the Kth term, absolute value, then take the limit as K goes to infinity. So take this whole thing, put it in the denominator, do the add 1 to the Ks, so K plus 1, then the factorial, 2 times parentheses K plus 1, all that in parentheses and a factorial that is the top. The absolute value of all that. Well, everything's positive here, so I was able to drop the absolute values. Now, this little one at the bottom is going to flip. So the 2k factorial goes to the top. The k factorial is in the bottom. This k plus 1 factorial is in the top. This 2 times parentheses k plus 1, then factorial is in the bottom. But this is 2k plus 2, all that times uh, or factorial. Now, let's see here. 2k plus 2 factorial is 2k plus 2 times 2k plus 1 times 2k factorial all the way down. That 2k factorial is going to cancel with the one up here. Uh, k plus 1 factorial is k plus 1 times k factorial, so those k factorials will cancel. So that leaves the k plus 1 in the top. A 2k plus 2 and a 2k plus 1. Actually, I didn't do it this way, but I should have. I should have just uh, factored the 2 out of this and then canceled the k plus 1s as well. In fact, let me do that. Okay, so that 2k plus 2 is 2 times k plus 1. Factor out that so we can cancel the k plus 1s and we get 1 over 2 times 
2k plus 1. As k goes to infinity, the denominator goes to infinity, the top is a constant, so that goes to 0, and that is certainly less than 1. So it converges uh, absolutely by the ratio test. And I added up the first 50 terms using a calculator, I guess, somewhere. And I got about 0.5922965. Let's do one more. Um, k over 5 to the k power. Sub from k equals 1 to infinity. We suspect this will converge. This, this exponential should clearly dominate over the, the uh, linear term in the top. Okay. So, in fact, if we sort of ignore the k in the top, this is like one-fifth to the k, a convergent geometric series. We'd like to compare to that, but this is bigger than that. So, that's not going to be helpful for a direct comparison, but it will work for a limit comparison test. So, the way the limit comparison test works is you put the series that you know on the top, k over 5 to the k, the series that we're working with, we're trying to find. The series that we know whether it converges or not, is one-fifth to the k. That's a convergent um, geometric series when we sum that up. And so we take this limit. Well, this is a 5 to the k, 1 over 5 to the k. That's got a 1 over 5 to the k, so that cancels out. And you just get k. That limit is infinity. So, oh, that didn't help because that limit, uh, that would have been fine if the, this was a divergent down here in the bottom. This would have told it diverged, but that's not going to be helpful. All right, so let's try the ratio test. Okay, sometimes you just try stuff and it doesn't work. You can try something else. Okay, so let's try the ratio test. Uh, we got our, our series is k over 5 to the k. Take the, uh, add 1 to the, all the k's, put it on the top, k plus 1 over 5 to the k plus 1. So when you invert and multiply here, we get k plus 1 the top, the 5 to the k plus 1 the bottom the k in the bottom and the 5 to the k in the top. Here you, here you uh, divide by subtracting exponents or 5, k of those 5 fives, k of those factors of fives cancel out, leaving just one uh, 5 in the bottom, which I brought up front. And then we've got k plus 1 over k, and uh, we know that that goes to 1. You can think of it, among other ways, you can think of it as... Uh, let me do it this way. So among other ways you could think of it is just distribute this k here, and you get 1 plus 1 over k. This 1 over k goes to 0, so this goes to 1 times the 1 fifth is 1 fifth, or 0.2. That's less than 1. So this does converge absolutely by the ratio test. Okay, And if we try to sum the first 50 terms there, uh, I think I did it up here and got, got some exact fraction. Uh, but there's a decimal version. It's approximately 0 0.3125. And so that gives us, uh, it converges, and it's about 0 0.3125. That's summing the first 50 terms. The ratio test doesn't have a built-in uh, bound on, the, uh, on it there. And the F, we're going to do one more. Okay. Get that column knocked out. Okay, so F is um, the sum of negative 2 to the K plus K over 3 to the K. Well, we can think of this as two parts as, uh, well, if we look at the absolute value, we'll see if we can get absolute convergence, first of all. So the absolute value is less than or equal to at least 2 to the k plus k over 3 to the k. And that is 2 thirds to the k plus k over 3 to the k. So if this converges here, then the original thing converges absolutely. Well, that's a convergent geometric series with the base uh, b equals 2 thirds. Okay, and the second converges by the ratio test. It's just about like the last problem. Since we just did the last problem, we knew where to start on this one, right? So uh, it's this part right here is k plus 1 over 3 to the k plus 1 and over k to the over 5. Uh, no, that's supposed to be 3 to the k. 
clearly I copied and pasted from the last problem and didn't fix that part. Okay, and then we flip this over, we get three to the K in the top, K in the bottom, three to the K plus one on the bottom, K plus one on the top, divide by uh, three to the K in the top and bottom, that cancels out, leaves it three, I put that out front, that's what we're in the, it's in the denominator, so it's a one third. We got K plus one over K, we just know that that converges to one, so this converges to one third, or 0.3 repeating, which is less than one. So this series, right, the second part converges absolutely, this part here converges absolutely. So, so uh, this is a uh, converges by direct comparison. Okay. And then I probably should say by a direct comparison test. All right, that's at least one way to do this. I'm not saying that's the only way to do these problems, but that's um, maybe the easiest or one of the most straightforward ways to look at some of these problems. Uh, since that one did converge, I ran it through a calculator to give an approximation of where it uh, converges to, and it's around 0.35, a little bigger than that. All right, let's come back next video and do some more, okay? Uh, let me go back to here real fast. So if you want to pause the video and write down this next column of problems, if you haven't done them yet, do those before you come back for the next video.